21st century. From autonomous cars that can take you from one place to another without the need of a driver. To a day and age where an egg becomes the king of the internet. We, the millennials, have done some amazing things to push the human race forward. We are termed as the future of humanity. And whenever we hear the word future, it's almost impossible not to think of the word innovation. It's a governing factor of every single thing we do. And yet, the way innovation has been marketed to us is completely flawed. Yes, marketed, especially to kids like myself. Just like unaware and highly attracted buyers, we plunge into the ecosystem of innovation for things that are far too materialistic for this day and age of exponential growth. Where victory is all that we aim for, and regardless of whether we emerge victorious or not in these so-called innovation competitions, we leave our ventures behind and never think about them ever again. That is because our sole motto becomes to get those shining trophies and show it off to the world. I have been guilty of doing this exact same thing year and year again until a conversation changed my perspective of life. On June 12, 2018, Adwet and myself were having a regular conversation about school and studies. And one thing led to another, and we started to talk about organic waste. Now, don't ask me how that happened, because I, for myself, have no clue. Now that it did happen, we were astonished to find out that over 1.3 billion tons of organic waste is produced each year, out of which only 23% is recycled or reused in any manner. That means over 960 million tons of it end up in landfills, where the mixing of organic and inorganic waste lead to the release of harmful acidic vapors. This small piece of information sparked the curiosity within us, and we embarked on an unforgettable journey. In order to get more field information, we started to conduct experiments. Over a period of three months, we conducted 13 experiments, each ranging from checking the amount of acidity released during the combination of organic and inorganic wastes, to checking the extent to which organic wastes harm the aquatic life. In these three months, we learned far more than what the classrooms have taught us. I mean, that's a clear indication of how far the education system has come. Now, after conducting these experiments, we foremost certainly concluded that the current ways of organic waste disposal were flawed. Every single one of them. Except for composting. You see, composting was one of the most intriguing factors of our research because it is one of the most eco-friendly ways of getting rid of organic waste. And yet, not widely accepted across the globe. And so we asked ourselves, why? Why do people not just adopt composting and make a better and eco-friendly society? And so we went around and talked to around 250 strangers, telling them this exact same thing. Every one of them agreed. They said, yes. Composting is viable, eco-friendly, better for the future of society. But none of them found it compelling enough to change their current ways. Now, let me ask the audience a question. How many of you feel that you would be comfortable to sit next to a dustbin for an hour straight? Anyone? Now, what if that dustbin could charge your phone? How many of you would be willing to sit next to a dustbin that could charge your phone? Yes, now we're talking, right? You see, humans have the tendency to give attention to those things that are profitable to themselves. And so that's how we added the psychological twist into our research. We wanted to build a generator that could 
Harness the heat produced during the decomposition of organic waste to generate electricity. And that's when we had this crazy idea of having this organic waste chamber that could generate heat, and the chamber above would contain acetone, and that acetone chamber would, uh, the acetone would evaporate, it would turn a turbine and generate electricity. Oh my God, we were so excited. This was our first prototype, and we sat weeks trying to figure whether this thing could work. Equations were all around us, and experiments fl flooded inside our minds we couldn't prove. After weeks of trying to prove this theory, we were hit with a large hadron collision. This prototype could not work. Two reasons. Number one, it violated the fundamental laws of thermodynamics, which means it will never work. But secondly, even in this hypothetical world where it didn't violate these laws, the amount of electricity that would be required to make such a complex design would be far more than what it could generate, making it completely useless. We were dumbstruck and we had no clue what to do. For weeks go by and we still have nothing in front of our eyes. We feel like it's probably time to give up. And that's when another conversation shifted the way we thought. This is a thermoelectric module. It works on the principle of Seebeck effect. Now, for those of you who don't know what Seebeck effect is, if this is a thermoelectric plate, a hot side and a cold side on two parallel directions creates a flow of electrons. And a flow of electrons means electricity. Yes, after weeks of not knowing what to do, we finally had a goal. And that's when we realized that it was time to stop writing equations and start becoming engineers. We believed that we could build an actual model that could generate electricity. And that's when the Kerabar Nazif generator was born. You see, this is the Kerabar Nazif generator. And it can generate electricity by using the principle of Seebeck effect. On top, you see thermoelectric plates wired up. And once organic waste decomposes, it generates heat. Now, the first time we tried this, we waited for six long days to get our first reading. Six long days felt like six long years. And until the seventh day, we've got our first reading of 0 0.6 volts of electricity by just 3.75 kilograms of it. And over a period of two weeks, we were able to generate over 1.2 volts average with just 3.75 kilograms of organic waste. Now, I can see the look on the faces saying, hey, 1.2 volts. I can't use fast charging with 1.2 volts. But when did I say that this was the end? In fact, we have just begun. And you see, that is the beauty of driving your innovations through your passion. Where we're not motivated by something materialistic, Rather, we're driven by the passion and curiosity, and your only goal is to innovate and make the world a better place. Our journey was unique. Make your journey count, and you will be an innovator that matters. Thank you.